Happy hump day. The NBA is pissing me off, but we keep grinding. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and we are here in the middle of the week to talk some more NBA basketball. That's right. It was an incredibly wild night in the NBA. What is new? Um, here's just a few things that happened. Let's just real quick go over it. The Pelicans scored 139 points, and their three stars, Zion, Ingram, and McCollum, not one of them scored more than 16 points. That is crazy. Grayson Allen started 8 for 8 from three-point range, and the Suns won in overtime in Denver without Devin Booker and ruined my bet. Uh, Cavaliers best beat the best team in the league without their best player. That was wild, too. And then this one, I am just so fed up with this part of the NBA right now, guys. And this is not me going on rants and making excuses, but this is frustrating to all sports bettors. Tyrese Maxey out of thin air today got ruled out with a concussion. It's not It's not like it's some injury that's like a hamstring, it gets tight. A concussion is something you should probably know about unless he hit his head at home or something because he didn't even play the day before. I don't know if he hit his head on the headboard or whatever. He may have it. I'm not saying he doesn't have it, and I do hope he feels better. Those are not something to mess with. But how in the world, when you have millions and billions of dollars bet on the NBA, can a guy just get ruled out out of nowhere? When the night before, the morning of, nobody has any idea that he's even injured. And then all of a sudden, oh, he has a concussion. He's out. Man, that is frustrating. I never, ever would have bet that 76ers money line if I knew he was out. I'm not the only one going through this. I'm just sharing my anger and pain that you guys probably have, too, on some of your bets. But uh, anyways, that's what's going on. I am exhausted tonight, if you can't tell by my eyes, my new 38-year-old eyes. Uh, we've been staying up till midnight or 1 a.m. every single night recording these. And uh, yeah, it just kind of hit me. So we're not going to have a ton of bets in this video, but I still got a ton of research for you. We'll still give you a bet, and then the rest will be in the morning. Thank you guys uh, for understanding. We've been just... We just been killing it at night. That's for sure. Killing ourselves. I mean, not killing it. But anyways, uh, NBA Tuesday talk. Let's recap that real quick. We had some great answers. A uh, ton of Reggie Miller and Ray Allen. I mean, that's that's a given. And if you weren't there, the question was, who is the greatest shooter of all time? Not named Steph Curry. Um, sneaky good answers. How about Peja? Peja Stoyakovich. Man, that guy for the Kings was a Sonics killer. That's for sure. Steve Nash, a great one, too. Dennis Scott, and how about Diana Taurasi, a little woman's uh, basketball? If you're going to say that, you might as well include Caitlin Clark. That girl is something special. She's fun to watch, that's for sure. But the funniest answer goes to at Mega Thiel. I may have pronounced that wrong. But um, anyone that he bets the under on is the answer. That's pretty good. That's not bad. I've, I feel that pain. Um, but anyways, let's get into two dad jokes and get into this video. You know it's hump day, so we got a lot to get into for some research help. Uh, these two come to you from my wife because she's now just helping me out with these. So here we go. The first one. I saw a short person climbing down a prison wall the other day. It was a little con descending. <laughs> it's pretty good. That's creative. All right, the last one. Here we go. A history degree. Okay, I butchered that. Here we go. Let's try it again. A history degree is useless. There's no future in it. Mm, all right, not too bad. That first one is good, though. If you understood it, it took me a second. Um, but anyways, in this video, we're going to recap yesterday. It sucked. Uh, and then we're going to talk defenses that give up the most points, rebounds, and assists to the small forward position. And then we got on Wednesdays, the G's of threes, talking hot shooters from downtown in the last eight games. And then I'll give you the best bets, and we'll finish it all up with the recap. So hit that like button. Leave a comment below. You guys are just absolutely crushing it with the comments. I appreciate it. Even some of you that just... Um, Comment with a basketball or an emoji. That that really helps the channel, helps us grow, helps more people on YouTube see the channel as well. So hit that subscribe as we are close to 21,000 subscribers now. So I appreciate it. Let's get into it. And it starts with the recap. All right, we start out with the first one that is so frustrating, the 76ers money line. I already, already ranted about it. Um, it lost because obviously Tyrese Maxey was out with a concussion and we all found out halfway through the day, but it is what it is. That's just one of those, uh, you know, when you get bets out the night before, I I'm due to get some of these uh, tough luck ones. But uh, next one, Emmanuel quickly over six and a half assists. This one stressed me out because it was an absolute and utter blowout, um, but he got a seventh assist. And guess what happened about five to 10 minutes later? He got a stat correction, of course, went back down to six. It is the fourth quarter. They're down by 182. And he luckily hit Kelly Olynyk for a three ball for a seventh assist before he got brought out before the with the blowout. So 
Um, and just to go with that, number five bet was a long shot. Only put three tenths of a unit on it. Um, I think he has a chance if they don't get absolutely blown out. But he had seven rebounds and seven assists, so he almost had a chance on both of them. But anyways, that was a, just a small loss. The five-point teaser, Pelicans, like I just mentioned, crushed the Raptors. The Nuggets minus four. NBA, what in the world is going on right now? The Nuggets at home, the team that everyone is picking to probably go back to the finals in the Western Conference, they're at home against a team without Devin Booker, and they get beat. And like I said, I said this in the video, the only way the Suns compete is if Grayson Allen goes nuclear. That was my exact line. Well, guess what? Grayson Allen went nuclear. I just got to tip my cap. Sometimes in basketball, you do all the research, and then someone gets absolutely in fuego on the other team. And you just tip your cap and move on. He's like I said, it might have been seven to seven or eight for eight. He was eight for ten, I think, at one point um, from the three point line. It, he just carried him in the first half. It was just unbelievable. But either way, nice win by the Suns in overtime. We had another chance in overtime, but the uh, Nuggets just fell apart. So um, that was a loss. And then this one, the one I added, Boncaro, eighteen plus points, got that decently easy. Bogdanovich, I really wish it was the other Bogdanovich in that game because he scored nineteen. But this Bogdanovich only took six shots, I believe, in that game. And that's like one of his lowest shot totals of the entire season. And he only made one of them. He just was horrendous. It was a bad read by me. I thought he'd have a good game without Trey Young like he has been. But he missed a ton of shots. And he didn't take a lot of shots, actually. So that was a loss. But anyways, I got to bounce back. We got to bounce back. I hope you guys got some winners from the research. But I'm ready to get some winners and get back on track here. So that's the recap for March 5th. Overall record now up 2.20 units. Man, oh man. Being up is a good thing, I guess. But uh, we were up almost 15, like I said, a couple weeks ago. So we got to get back there. And I'm uh, dedicated to it. It's a challenge right now in the NBA. But uh, we keep grinding. So that's the bets recap. Now it's time to talk some small forwards. All right, we first start out with the defense is giving up the most points to the small forward position, and the only matchup we have is the Cleveland Cavaliers facing DeAndre Hunter of the Atlanta Hawks, who's averaging 17.4 points per game, and the Cavs giving up over 23 points per game. But uh, other than that, all the other guys, nothing special, really. Ingram, obviously been pretty hot, 27.5 points per game. These were done right before the game started last night, just so you guys know, so that'll be a little bit lower for some, or for some of them because Ingram did not come close to 27.5. Uh, but other than that, Michael Porter Jr., Paul George, Benedict Matherin playing pretty well for the Indiana Pacers, so on and so on. So that's the points. Let's go check out the rebounds now, and we have zero matchups in this one. Um, but the Grizzlies, the only team giving up over 10 rebounds to the small forward position. And the man who just does not stop grinding away, Josh Hart, 12.5 rebounds per game. That's insane for a guy his size to be getting that many rebounds. But um, other than that, no real surprises there. So take a screenshot. Um, let's go check out the assists. All right, we only got one matchup here for the assists. The Wizards giving up 4.88 assists to the small forward position, facing Franz Wagner of the Orlando Germanys at four assists per game. I just haven't said that name in a while, and I wanted to. But um, other than that, you know, we got guys like Buddy Heald, Vince Williams Jr. up there, uh, averaging a decent amount of assists. So we got a few surprises. Kyle Anderson's kind of been right in that three and a half, four and a half uh, assist range as well. So. Anyways, take some screenshots. Hopefully this helps you get some winners, not just today, but throughout the week, because there's going to be more and more matchups, obviously, as we go along. So that's the uh, defenses versus the small forwards. And now it's time to talk the G's of threes. All right, if you are new to the channel, every Wednesday we talk the G's of threes. We talk the hottest three-point shooters in the last eight games. Just to kind of give you an idea, it helps you to know how many shots they're taking per game, how many they're making, maybe riding the hot hand with some bets. And then just recently over on the right side, we have let you know the 10 teams giving up the highest three-point percentage to their opponents in the last eight games. So maybe it uh, gives you some good matchups and things like that. But we use the 40 and 40 rule. You got to have taken 40 plus three-point attempts and shoot 40% or better from the three-point line to make this uh, list. So anyways, here's page one. I'm not going to go through every single one. Uh, the leader on this page is Keontae George, the rookie for the Utah Jazz, 27 for 60, 45% shooting. Um, other than that, you know, no Steph Curry. That might be a surprise, but how about Jordan Poole being up here? That's a shocker. He had one extremely hot game, that's for sure. And then Clay Thompson shooting the ball much better. Seems like he has less pressure on himself coming off the bench, uh, talking about retirement in the next couple of years, things like that. But um, he's been playing well. Dunkin' Donuts there for the Miami Heat, filling in some more for uh, Tyler Hero when he doesn't play, uh, so on and so on. But anyways, that's page one, and let's go check out page two now. 
As you can see, Mr. Lou Dort for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He is the leader in the clubhouse. That's right. The highest percentage in the last eight games, 48.9%. And by the way, on the on the people that you see seven or six games, we just want to point that out because not every one of them played all eight games. Um, so I want to make sure you guys knew that just in case you're trying to figure out how many how many threes the guy's taken per game and things like that. But Corey Kisper for the Washington Wizards is on this list. Not always up here. Kuzma shooting 44.4%. Um, and then Norman Powell's been shooting the ball really well, along with Derek White up there, as you can see. So anyways, and then it's just wild to even think about a guy his size, Mr. Wet Bananas down there at the bottom, shooting 42.2% from three-point range. So that's page two. We just got a few more on page three. Um, uh, you know, nothing real surprising here. Okuro, uh, Isaac Okuro for the Cleveland Cavaliers is shooting the ball pretty well. He hasn't been on this list all year, I don't believe. Um, and then Fettuccini there for the Detroit Pistons. Uh, it's Fontecchio, by the way, in case you're trying to search his name. You're not going to find it under Fettuccini. But anyways, those are the Gs of threes. Hopefully this helps you guys get some winners. Let me know if it does. You know, I love to hear that, uh, that you use the research and how you used it. It could be used on points per game, three-pointers, uh, you know, shots made, three-pointers, and things like that. So anyways, be sure to use those matchups as well on the right side. So that's the Gs of threes. And now it's time for the best bets. All right, this segment of the video is brought to you by Better Bet. That's BTR Bet. It is the best place to find, track, analyze, and share your bets. And we will have a video soon, a few minute video explaining how it works. It is incredible. So stay tuned for that. But here we go. First bet and only bet on the video. If you fast forward through the intro, I am exhausted. Uh, been a long day, and uh, I'm just going to give out one bet so I can go to bed before 1 a.m. for the first time in a while. So here we go. Um, I'll give you some leans after this, and then we'll have more bets in the morning. Don't you worry. So Clippers at the Houston Rockets. Clippers minus 6.5. Total in this game is 225. Uh, against the spread this year, Clippers 31-29 and 29 ATS, 16-15 and 15 ATS at home, or on the road, sorry. And then Houston Rockets, 31, 28, and 2. And then obviously, you know, they are a good home team. They are 20, 10, and 1 ATS at home. So over under, uh, two big under teams. Clippers, 35, 23, and 2 to the under. And the Rockets, 33, 26, and 2 to the under as well. Now, if I had to pick a side, it's a tough one. Um, you know, the Clippers can sometimes be hard to trust. Uh, based on the pace and how these guys play, I'd probably lean under 225. Um, as for a side, that's tough. Rockets are, you know, they can play well at home sometimes. So it's probably a stay away, maybe a Clippers money line and a parlay if you had to. But uh, my best bet is on a guy that you guys might roll your eyes at. Here we go. Give me James Harden over 17 and a half points at minus 125 on DraftKings. So Mr. Harden, we know he can be a hard player to trust sometimes, but who isn't in the NBA anymore right now? Um, so he's going back to play one of his old teams, the Houston Rockets. Um, it's not why I bet this. It's actually, I didn't even think about it in my head until about halfway through the research. So obviously I love the matchup as well. Um, uh, but he's had some games where he's been really aggressive lately. That's what it is. Is he going to be, uh, be aggressive when he comes out or is he just going to kind of defer to Kawhi and all that? But he scored 20 plus points now in four of his last five games. And in his last three games, this is where it gets weird. 29 points against the Bucks, 28 against the Wizards, and four against the Timberwolves. He went 0 for 10 shooting against the Timberwolves. So, but he usually plays well in good matchups. Like I just mentioned, the Milwaukee Bucks, good matchup for point guards. The Washington Wizards, good matchup. And he went for almost 30 in both of those. Obviously, you know, Russell Westbrook is out. So he is the main guy, main distributor, main score, or not main score, one of the three main scorers as well. Uh, but he's facing a Rockets team that has given up the most points to the point guard position in the entire NBA in the last 15 days. Now, I could leave you with that and not tell you anything more, but I dug more into it because I wanted to see why 15 days can be a short sample size sometimes. They played Devin Booker three times and SGA twice. So that's a big reason why. But they've still given up seventh most points to the point guard position over the course of the season. Um, in an earlier game versus the Rockets, James Harden scored 24 points. That was all the way back in November, so take that for what it is. Uh, but I think he comes out aggressive in this one. Obviously, it's his old team. He's not going to come out and just kind of defer to everybody, I wouldn't think. Uh, you know you're going to get minutes. You know you're going to get the volume. Hopefully, he can knock down those threes and doesn't have one of those 0 for 10 shooting nights. Um, and you hope that's a competitive game. Will it be? Who the heck knows anymore in the NBA but you just hope it is going to be somewhat competitive. Six and a half point spread in Houston. Um, in LA, I'd be a little more worried about a blowout. But um, this is a, a not only a matchup play, it's kind of a gut feeling for me. Uh, it's, you know, sometimes you got to go with gut feeling. Right now in the NBA, 
Um, you just got to kind of trust uh, you trust your numbers and trust kind of where you think is a good spot and uh, matchup and things like that. So um, we all know uh, Harden is known for going out in Houston, Texas, because that's what he did when he played for the Rockets. So hopefully he stays away from the nightlife, gets some good sleep and uh, comes ready to play because I think he can score 20 plus points in this game. You could also take points and assists. I almost did his 25 and a half. You just have to get eight to make that even. Um, but he's been right about that eight, nine mark. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you to take it. I, I really almost took that one as well. So you know, maybe a sprinkle on a double, double, if he can get 10 assists too. So anyways, that is my one and only bet in this video right now. Again, I will have a couple video or a couple bets tomorrow, but let's just go over a couple leans real quick. Cause I want to give you guys something before we get out of here. Um, one of them is really hard for me to say out loud. Um, but I have to, it's Kobe white under 23 and a half points, the Jabo hall of famer. It's just a, it's kind of a, a sell high spot right here. So jazz allowing the second fewest points to the point guard position in the last month. I mean, they're, they've been playing well against the point guard. Kobe is averaging 20 points per game when he's on the road. He scored 24 or less in 21 of his 30 road games. This is a high number guys. He was on absolute fire last game. He was, it was cool to see. Um, it's hard to pull the trigger on a Kobe white under. I get that. It was 24 and a half. It's already moved to 23 and a half. It may even move to 22 and a half. I don't, you know, that's as low as I definitely play it, but I kind of like Kobe white under 23 and a half points. Seems kind of like a, a DeMar DeRozan maybe type of game, but, um, um, or Vucevic of course too. So, but anyways, Kobe white under 23 and a half points is my first lean. Second lean, Steph Curry, the man over 30 and a half points plus assists. He's going up against Damian Lillard guys. We know Damian Lillard has zero interest in playing defense. Buck struggle versus the point guard position. And uh, Steph's coming off a game where he didn't play a lot. Neither did his teammates because they got absolutely annihilated by the Celtics. And I think with that embarrassing loss they just had, Steph's going to come out ready to go, fired up, um, and hopefully he just knocks down some shots. So, And he's been getting some decent assists. He's kind of hit and miss with the sh uh, assists. So if you want to just go points, I don't mind that either. Um, again, I haven't made a bet on any of these two bets. These are just two leans that I have. Like I said, it is super late at night. Uh, the wife got home super late from work and we were just, it's, it's been a long night. I'll just say that. So one bet, two leans. That's what I got for you. More coming in the morning. Thank you guys for, uh, understanding. I know you guys do. You always are very supportive and appreciative. So anyways, that's what we got for the best bets segment for today. Let's check out the bets recap. All right, there's the one and only bet we have so far for the slate. It's James Harden over 17 and a half points at minus 125. Again, I will have more added plays. Just as you can see right there, I'm just tired. I feel like that kid right there resting on the basketball. So, um, but that's what we got for you. Thank you guys for the support. Hopefully you guys use the G's of threes and all that research help to go get some winners. Let's keep grinding away as we get closer and closer to the NBA playoffs and the MLB season. Again, the American League preview video is already out with our best future bets, and we'll have the National League video out here in the next week or so. So thank you guys for the support. As always, I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.